Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be going to Pluto and discussing its unusual system. We're going to talk about what exactly Pluto and Charon are, and we're going to discuss their unusual satellites as well. And here we are actually approaching it right now. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So this particular simulation is the New Horizons mission back uh, in 2015. This mission actually passed by Pluto, took some amazing photos and got some amazing data of this unusual former planet and then basically flew away to its ne next destination. But we're actually going to stick around here and we're going to discuss this system in a little bit more detail, mostly because Today, we actually are very curious to study these two objects as they represent a very unusual binary system. Now, they almost got promoted to a binary planet once because, well, look at them. They actually kind of orbit around one another. As a matter of fact, um, they are kind of swinging around the central point right here known as barycenter. And this barycenter is outside of both objects. So in a sense, this is maybe a double planet or at least a double dwarf planet. And because of this, we are very, very interested in studying these two objects. And here's why. The other satellites. There is actually one, two, three, four more moons orbiting around the pluto Charon uh, barycenter. And these four moons known as Styx, Nix, Kerberos and Hydra have very unique yet very stable orbits. But here's the thing. Generally speaking, a dual system or a binary system seem to produce quite a lot of um, variations in orbital parameters. So here, there's actually a lot of torque and a lot of forces that are being produced by these two objects that should technically not allow for other um, moons to kind of form or for other moons to even exist in that orbit. At least that's what we thought before. And then we realized that there is actually a few locations in those orbits where they can totally have very stable parameters. And this is exactly what's happening here with Pluto. But on top of all of this, there's something else very interesting about each four of these moons. Each one of them actually spins or orbits um, in such a way in such an unpredictable way that it actually never has the same uh, rotational velocity. In other words, sometimes they actually start spinning really fast, sometimes they speed, uh, spin even faster, and sometimes they slow down and move a little bit slower. And this rotation is extremely unpredictable. As a matter of fact, it's almost chaotic. Now, that's actually very interesting. And all of this is caused because essentially each of these moons um, orbits around two objects instead of just one object. So their, uh, their spinning parameters are always, always changed. And because of this, this creates a very interesting question. And the question is this. So, okay, with dual planets, we understand. So maybe, just maybe, this is a common thing. But if we were to go into a system that has a binary star, would this actually also apply? In other words, if I were to place some random planets in orbit here, which might actually not even survive, but we'll place them anyway, would this system have very similar sort of aspects? So, if I were to go to one of these planets, would it also be spinning very randomly? Would its rotational period also change quite a lot, depending on whether it's uh, closer to one of the stars or the other star? And if so, that means that every once in a while, the sunrise would actually, you know, happen in the east, but then the sunset might actually happen in the north, and then suddenly the sun might come up from a completely different direction and might actually uh, set somewhere else. It would be extremely unpredictable. And this suggests that the face of those planets around uh, these binary systems might actually be completely different as well, because in our solar system, the majority of moons and the majority of objects has a very predictable and very, very set in stone kind of uh, way of uh, rotation and also basically sunrises and sunsets. So we always see the sun from the same direction 
it always comes up in the east at least uh, on earth and it always sets in the west um, every single day but in these systems on these planets the rotation will be so unpredictable that you never know what's going to happen and so the actual surface of the planet will be changed as well because sometimes it's hotter sometimes it's cooler and sometimes it starts uh, getting long nights and sometimes it will get uh, really really long uh, hot days so a lot of this will definitely change what happens here not to mention that if there is any life that would form on those planets it would also have to deal with a lot of unpredictability and a lot of chaos. For life development and for evolution isn't always the best thing. Because having predictability and having some sort of a cycle is really what helped life evolve on our own planet Earth. But going back to this binary system. So this is the first cool part about it. The other cool part about it is that we now think we understand a little bit better how the system was actually formed. So we think that there was actually a collision between two objects and we're going to simulate this by creating a new simulation here and basically placing a random uh, smaller object. So maybe like a random moon or something. And, and here we're going to essentially launch another moon at it. And when, this, uh, when these two moons collide, they're going to create quite an explosion, but at the same time, they're actually going to create potentially at least, a ring around them. They're going to create a kind of a um, ring of remains and basically of leftover fragments from the collision. And as this ring solidifies, and we might have to create one manually, and there it is. Um, so as this ring basically solidifies and turns into actual objects, it will eventually create um, various moons so those four moons that you saw orbiting around pluto and charon but one thing we're missing here of course is the other companion in this case it would be i guess charon that would orbit around this moon and so because now they're actually kind of orbiting around one another in this particular situation and let me actually just add the rings once again creating another uh set of moons around it is going to be very very challenging mostly because well these two objects are just going to create too much disturbance. And you'll see this in a second if I accelerate time. Um, the other moon, which I probably should just name Sharon, even though it's a little bit uh, smaller than actual Sharon, is going to basically, uh, for the most part at least, remove all of these particles from orbit here, at least with time. So how those four moons were created around Pluto and Sharon is still a mystery to us because we don't really know exactly what happened and how they were formed. But because they are there, we are now absolutely certain that it can happen and it does happen. But you know what? Having run a lot of these simulations, I can tell you that it is very, very difficult. It is extremely difficult to create um, planets or moons around a binary system. And you can try this yourself using the Universe Sandbox, the game that you can purchase in the link in the description. Well, so that's kind of all I wanted to talk about in this video. I wanted to explain to you why Pluto and Charon are actually kind of cool. They do teach us a lot about binary stars and they do still hold a lot of mysteries about how they were formed. But most importantly, the four moons of Pluto and Charon, uh, Styx, Nix, uh, Kerberos and Hydra, seem to be very unique objects. They seem to have very unique um, orbital parameters and they seem to have a lot of answers to the mysteries of the universe. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.